Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I'm gonna to do a little bit of urban exploration, repeater exploration, see if I can connect to a somewhat nearby repeater with this radio. You know what? Not this one. In a previous video, I unboxed it and I was hoping that I got a red one. So they reached out and they said, we'll send you some more, but we want you to do some giveaways. So stay tuned to a Monday Night's Nuggets episode where they will do some giveaways of the VR N76 radio. I hope this one's red. Let's take a look. <laughs> this one is that crazy Motorola color. It looks pretty good, but it's not the red one. Oh well, we'll just have to keep making videos until I get a red one. And these things ship with their batteries protected. So if it doesn't work when you first turn it on, that right there is the reason why. This is the first radio I've seen that has that. There we go, now it's on. Okay, out of the box, this thing is fairly easy to program. It comes in channel mode and we don't want it in channel mode. So I need to hold down the star key to switch it over to VFO mode. I'm gonna put in 146.85, which is the listen frequency of my local repeater. I'm gonna go into menu and I'm gonna go into one of these ones here, I forget which one it is, signaling but it's okay because I can just scan these things around. I wanna change power to high. So I push the green button until it changes to high. And then offset, I wanna set offset to auto negative, select. Okay, and now, because this repeater has no tones, we are programmed in for this repeater. If I push to talk, 146.85 becomes 146.25. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf testing. And we got the repeater tail, awesome. Okay, this video was supposed to be an antenna shootout video, and I programmed in the local repeater, which I can never contact, and while I was programming it in, it worked. So for Hollywood Magic, we're going to ignore that, right? Right? See, that sound right there is the repeater tail, and I have the radio held out horizontally, which means I should have some suppression. However, I am in a river valley, so if I hold it up normally like this, I don't get the repeater tail at all when I push the talk. That is just weird. There's some refraction or reflection going on that is making this work. Very interesting. Well, so again, if I hold it up like this and key up, Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing, it now works. Really? I had to get out of the sunshine because it was starting to get a little hot. But we're gonna work on a repeater here and we're gonna see how these antennas connect. And the repeater I am working on is the K0FCC. <laughs> what a cool call sign for a repeater. The K0FCC repeater. And it is 37.3 miles away in New Brighton, which is in Anoka County, which is in Minnesota. And I am in Wisconsin. I've got it all programmed into the radio already. Programming it is fairly slick and easy as I just showed you. So we're gonna key up on 145 290 with the included rubber ducky antenna. Nothing, nothing in return. Nada. Silence. Okay, so now we need to upgrade antennas because the rubber duck isn't always the best antenna. It's a great antenna to get you started out of the box, but we all know that height makes might and more wire in the air means more zoomies going through the atmospheres and that is what is important. So I'm gonna take off the rubber duck, it just unscrews. We'll put that over on the right-hand side of the chair and on the left-hand side, I have a whole bunch of antennas. First up, when Vero sent this radio in, they sent in two gooseneck style antennas and they are short and long. And these are actually pretty nice antennas. They have a metal piece in the middle here, so it's not just gonna flop over, you can actually kind of set it. So if you had it like coming out of your backpack or something, you could have it standing upright. Some kind of hybrid design where this top piece here appears to be plastic and then metal, and I'm not really sure where the radiator is inside, but let's give them a try. We're gonna try the short one first, all right? It just screws in place of the original antenna. Key up and no response. At the distance that this repeater is from this radio, I don't really expect a response. We're gonna put this one over on the right-hand side, and we're gonna get the longer one. Same thing, no response. That is three antennas down. This is gonna go by pretty quick if they, if none of them work. The next one up is the super elastic signal stick. And these come in a variety of ends. This one here is the SMA female end, which is compatible with this radio. So a red antenna on 
told you I wanted a red radio. A red antenna on a Motorola yellow radio. Nothing, nada. All right, what is our next biggest antenna? Let's get the signal stick off. So I have this really neat antenna that I got from Abri. All of these antennas will be linked in the description down below. These are pretty slick little devices. This one here, you can unscrew the loading coil from the bottom of the antenna. And now you have this piece and you have this piece. And these two here, if you compare them base to base, are the same height. So we'll put the short whip rubber ducky style antenna on. And I don't really think it's gonna make much difference, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so that is all screwed in together. Put that on the radio. And this is the AR800 antenna. Nothing. So this is where this antenna gets interesting. I'll take the short little rubber duck piece off and then I will put this piece here on. This one here is really slick. You're gonna like this. So the top piece extends and so does the bottom piece. So this thing here is probably three foot tall. Nothing still. So we'll put that over on the right hand side. And of course, what antenna review would be complete if I didn't include the Abri 48 inch and fed half wave antenna. So we're gonna go ahead and screw this one on. Oh, this one is BNC. I need an adapter. And I just happen to have an adapter. All right, that's not weird at all. The radio is now on the ground, and this is the tip of the antenna here. Let's see if this one gets us out. Oh, this one doesn't get us out either. Oh, there it was. Found it. Okay, so I found a sweet spot where I can Test it, let's try the AR800 antenna again. That's the AR800, it works, it's kind of scratchy though. But it works, just to be fair, we'll try the signal stick over in that same general position. Okay, that works as well. The longer gooseneck. Okay, signal stick is the antenna that wins so far, but we're not done yet. Right now, what I have here is the coax for the Edfong roll-up J-pole. And if the little Abri 48 inch N-fed half wave antenna can get it, there's no chance that the Edfong is not gonna be able to make it. And because this is on coax, I can actually sit down and be comfortable. Kilo Mike 9 Golf on the K0FCC repeater, KM9G. Nope, let me show you how I got this headphone antenna rigged up. First off, it's a long way down there. There's my shadow on the ground. And we are up on a patio and I've got a 10 meter mast hooked up to the side and I've got it fully extended. So there's the antenna at the top of the 10 meter mast. The headphone antenna works. I wonder if this Faraday antenna is going to work. This is a sewn roll-up J-pole style antenna. It's got my call sign on it, look at that. This comes from my buddy ham radio rookie, Ben. And it's got this really neat little BNC connector on it. That's pretty cool. We're gonna get this one mounted up and we will try it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work too. Now we've got Ben's antenna, the Faraday, up on the pole. Let's give her a shot. And of course it works. It actually sounds a little quieter. Maybe the fabric's muffling it. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. All right, she works. You guys have probably seen Ben's Faraday before, the two meter roll up J pole. Did you know he also makes a 70 centimeter version? Look at that. Even smaller, even more roll-up action for you. This is pretty cool. Still uses the same BNC connector on the backside and still works just as well on 70 centimeters. Ben was putting this together and he's like, you know, I bet it might. I bet it might be smaller. I'll have to give it a shot. And he did. Pretty cool. One last antenna for you. This is a roll-up J-pole that I made out of some FM antenna, twin lead wire. Let's try this one out.
I'm just holding it in my hand. That's pretty cool. All right, and here's all of the different antennas, the stock rubber duck, the shorter gooseneck, the longer gooseneck, the AR800 Abri antenna, the super elastic signal stick, the 48 inch Abri antenna, that's kind of crazy. The Edfong roll-up J-Pole, my own custom roll-up J-Pole. I didn't test this one because it's a two meter repeater and it would be unfair, but this is a Ham Radio Rookie Ben's 70 centimeter roll-up J-Pole. And then lastly, the two meter roll-up J-Pole from Ben is still up there. The Farrah J. I always love playing with antennas. Today is no exception. Uh, it was kind of interesting. My original use case was a repeater that I thought I couldn't get into. And then sitting here on the patio, I found out that there is just a special way that I can activate the radio, hold the radio at a special angle and sort of whip it on in there, put a little English on it and get it right into the repeater. There's always a way to get out. And sometimes it is height and sometimes it is more wire. And sometimes it is just good old fashioned skill with the English on the antenna to get it out there. I don't know what happened there. There are links for all of these antennas and for the Vero radio down in the description. There's also a discount code for this and you can get this in a variety of colors. It's a pretty awesome little radio. There will be some more videos on this radio coming out. I'm going to play with the APRS and this thing does digipeating and eye gating. So be sure you are subscribed to the channel for that. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.